Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Thanks for joining us on AutoLine Daily today. You know, they say that you cannot tell the players without a scorecard, so here's the latest scorecard at Chrysler. The company just moved Saad Shabab to be the head of marketing at Maserati. He had been the head of the Chrysler brand. You might remember him from our live webcast from the Detroit Auto Show and from the Woodward Avenue Dream Cruise. His old position now goes to Al Gardner, who had run Chrysler's Southeast Business Center. That's one of the company's regional sales and parts operations in the U.S. Chrysler also announced a number of other management changes, and you can follow the link in today's show notes to get them all. During the 1980s and 90s, GM, Ford, and Chrysler began outsourcing a lot of their tooling. Well, now it looks maybe they went too far. A report from the consulting firm Harbor Results says automakers could face a tooling shortage as they ramp up the number of new model introductions in the coming years. Today, automakers in North America spent $9 billion on tooling, but that's headed to $15 billion later this decade. It takes anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 different tools to make a car. In fact, a front-end fascia needs 35 tools, and that does not even include the tooling for the lighting. On average, there is about $550 of tooling cost baked into the price of every vehicle. Interestingly, the study also found that Chinese-made tooling is not the bargain that it once was. Rising labor and transportation costs now put Chinese tooling only about 10% cheaper than tools made in North America. Boy, we are seeing a flurry of activity from automakers with fuel cell cars. Last week, we showed you a fuel cell concept from Toyota. Today, it's Honda's turn. The company released this sketch of a fuel cell car that will debut at the LA Auto Show later this month. No further details were provided, but mark my words, we're gonna see a lot more fuel cell announcements in the near future. In a move to reduce emissions and cut costs, production costs, Mercedes is moving away from V6s and going back to an inline six. This marks the first time since the mid nineties that the company developed a new inline six, which is expected to be under the hood of the next gen E-Class in 2016. The engine is part of a new modular powertrain architecture that will also produce three and four cylinder versions as well. As you know, the AutoLine crew was at the SEMA show last week. We saw automakers roll out some crazy customs, but Ford appeared to be taking a different avenue. Of course, it had its share of crazy customs like this Hot Wheels Transit Connect or this Police Focus ST but the company seemed more focused on the versatility of its engines. Chip Ganassi Racing will switch from BMWs to a Ford EcoBoost next year for the Daytona prototype class. The 3.5 liter EcoBoost race engine shares 70% of its parts with the Taurus SHO. Ford also had a supercharged 5.4 liter V8 stuffed under the hood of a custom 1956 F100 pickup that it's going to auction at Barrett-Jackson with the help of Kisses, Gene Simmons, and his wife, Shannon Tweed, with all the proceeds going to a children's hospital. And after more than a 20-year absence, Ford will be back in the business of making marine engines. The brand teamed up with Inmar Marine to produce three marine versions of its SVT Raptor engine that will vary in horsepower and torque. And we'll have more from SEMA coming up tomorrow, so make sure that you stay tuned. And we just got details of the electric version of the Kia Soul. The car is powered by a 109 horsepower electric motor and a 27 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, which gives it a range of over 120 miles. By comparison, the Nissan Leaf has a 107 horsepower electric motor and a 24 kilowatt battery pack and a range of 75 miles. The Soul EV moves from 0 to 62 miles an hour in less than 12 seconds with a top speed of 90 miles an hour. It takes five hours to charge the car with a 240 volt outlet or only 25 minutes with a 440 volt 
Level 3 Quick Charger. It all goes on sale next year. Subaru just sent us this tease of its new 2015 WRX. It shows off a new front end design language. It's quite a bit different than the outgoing model. and We think the grill looks kind of similar to a Ford Fusion. The 2015 WRX debuts at next week's LA Auto Show. And speaking of auto shows next week, Lexus will unveil the CT200H at the Guangzhou Motor Show in China. The compact hybrid gets upgraded exterior styling that, of course, includes that spindle grille. It also gets new wheels and a new rear fascia. But boy, that car definitely needs help. Last month, sales dropped 32% in the U.S. market. Just as plug-in hybrids are kind of a bridge between hybrid cars and pure electrics, bi-fuel cars are a bridge between gasoline and natural gas. Coming up next, we'll show you the latest bi-fuel technology from the largest automotive supplier in the world. Here's another great thing about the all-around performance of our Dueler tires. A comfortable, quiet ride. Oh. At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. Every two years, the Robert Bosch Company opens up its doors to the media to come on in and look at all the technology that it's working on. Some of that technology is right around the corner, some of it is decades down the road, but here is one of those technologies. Well, this car is equipped with the so-called bi-fuel system, which means there is gasoline and CNG on board. The whole system is controlled via a Bosch Motronic, which is the engine control unit. It is controlling the gasoline and the CNG mode, and is also able to switch between gasoline and CNG without any change of torque. The advantage is that uh, the customer is able to drive as long on CNG as possible. We start in cold conditions in natural gas mode and we try to keep the car as long as possible on natural gas. This helps the driver to get most out of the cost-effective fuel natural gas. The system is uh, automatic. It starts also in cold start operations in natural gas. There is nothing you need to push on the dashboard because we think the driver doesn't have to worry about that. He's filling up the car and he's driving and our system is doing all the rest. So very comfortable for the driver, very easy, and a very relaxed way of saving money with a cheap fuel. The system is designed to go for a whole car life, which means 240,000 kilometers lifetime. It is capable of turbo applications and also oil-free gas. This system is in serious production in uh, several customers in Europe. It is also available in customers in Asia. Uh, there is a very good possibility to do this also in the U.S. Um, we are ready and prepared for projects to go to the U.S. to share our CNG knowledge and experience from all over the globe. Boy, I tell you, this bi-fuel technology is getting more and more attention. GM announced that it'll come out with a bi-fuel version of the Chevy Impala. And did you know Fiat makes more bi-fuel cars than anyone else in the world? And you know, it's not just the cheap price of natural gas that makes this attractive. It can also cut CO2 emissions by over 30%, and that sure solves a lot of technical issues for automakers who face stringent CO2 regulations. Anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching, and remember, we'll be right back here again tomorrow.